welcome everyone to uh, to our summer special. Um, we've been bashing uh, Daniel Steinberg, uh, Mr. Curl, for for his choice of license and so on throughout the uh, the series up until now. So we invited him to talk to us. He's been sending lawyers and everything after us. So so we we needed to bring him on air. <laughs> welcome. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we, we can start in the awkward and directly. I mean, everyone says don't invent your own license, and, and you're fairly successful as an engineer. But why did you invite your license? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, the the sad truth is actually pretty boring. But but I, I could just start from the beginning that uh, originally when I released my first version of Curl in, in 1998, I released it as a GPL license actually, and then oh. after just a short while um, some of my early users complained when they wanted to use it in, in some commercial surroundings and um, <clears throat> I later relicensed it under the Mozilla public license because I figured that was more closer to what I actually wanted uh, uh, but that of course then only hit me back in the head after a while when people then complained that they couldn't use it in GPL licensed uh, pro programs. And, and then I switched to the MIT license. Or rather, um, I switched to the MIT license. And actually, this is quite sad and, and boring for you. But I don't actually remember, because I didn't do that extra fiddling of the license text, which is why Curl has a different license, because it was the MIT one original, originally, but someone changed some of the <laughs> individual wording in that license. And I don't remember exactly why, or, or even why I thought that was OK. But we sort of, yeah, it clarified some, some phrase in there. And we, I was OK with that at the time. So th that's the sad and, and boring truth. And then it, we ended up with a license that it's almost MIT, but it's not. Which cool. fucks up people like us, where we want to have a nice uh, machine readable way of uh, white and blacklisting. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, I, I know it, it exactly. <laughs> it messes up everything, and uh, and a lot of systems where they where you detect license based on the of course the exact phrase phrasing of the real license so, so what yes. is your license called then is it the curl license or what is it called i always refer to it as an M mit license because that's what it is in spirit and it's sort of 98 percent mit wording even so it's very very close to the mit or, or the one the original x license mit slash x i call it sometimes and i think i call that because it's called it's called that i think on the osi website or somewhere where they sort of uh, so yes, if you would count words in my license and the original MIT, I guess uh, yeah, something 98, 99% of the words are the same. Mm -hmm. But it, it's very funny. You, you touched three things there. So, so the first one is the, the GPL and the, the Mozilla licenses don't really fit. And, and the GPL does limit the use cases. I mean, curl is used in embedded devices where, where GPL might be harder to use, especially GPL v3. <laughs> But also the changing licenses. Did did you have any external contributors that you had to align <clears> with, or or were you the sole copyright uh, owner? Well, I, I think back in those days, I think I was the sole copyright owner, but I still had contributors, so I still wanted everyone to be on board with the change. So I didn't want to be a, just a ruthless dictator, sort of saying, <laughs> casting my own opinions upon everyone without them being accepted among the crowd. So, so yes. Um, I, th I felt that I had the, the, my users and community with me when I did those changes. And then, of course, I've, um, I've accepted more and more contributors and more and more external copyright owners since we don't really have a um, policy of assigning copyright anywhere. So we have nowadays have a variety of copyright owners in the curl code. So nowadays, of course, it's... Uh, pretty much impossible to change the license. I don't even want to, but uh, it, it would be a challenge to do that. The, uh, so you started out, like, we discussed uh, like open projects on how to be open the other day. And so when did you get people joining in, in your project? Almost, I would say instantly, because in my project, well, Curl was a rename from the original from another name, right? So when I released Curl the first time, I already had a few users. <clears throat> so we basically from day one there were other 
users and, and contributors who submitted bug reports and patches. So even if that was a very small community, of course, the first few years, so um, we had. But the, you, you, oh, sorry. No, no. So we had we had external contributors already in 1998. Okay, and, and when was it you had GPL? And I assume GPL v2. Yeah, it was v2. It was before the v3 existed. So. Oh, it was, um, but, but it wasn't v1. <laughs> Yeah, there were <laughs> yes, but but it also um, I think perhaps a little bit of, of the explanation for for my license journey was also my inexperience with licenses and my sort of immaturity as a person in my own sort of what I wanted with the licenses and how they worked really. So I think I learned that along the way as well. So maybe if I had just been a little bit more experienced from the beginning, I would have taking it a different route when I started. So it was basically, uh, I picked GPL because that existed and that was what a lot of others did. So I didn't really think about it, I think, enough at the time when I picked it first. The, uh, was there any reaction to, to when you switched license or did you switch license from GPL to, what was it? Uh, from GPL to MPL. Oh, to MPL, yeah. Uh, did you get any reaction from the people in the project no i didn't okay but but then again it wasn't that many users and, and a small community so m maybe it's sort of yeah we all just discussed this and people thought it was my thing to do so uh, nobody objected was, uh, okay yeah that was early i think it was just after a few months in, in 1998 i don't remember exactly but it was sort of i think it was still at 98 and this was then a switch to MPL like one or one dot one mm. or can't remember. And I can't remember. I think it might have been one dot one, but um, I don't remember. Mm, okay. So yeah. after the the change to this the current license, the MIT style curl license, uh, has there been any? Uh, I mean, you, you said that the change was originally based on people complaining about the license. Has there been any complaining about the current license? Uh, very little, actually. There are, there are, of course, people who more... The, the only complaint nowadays is that's more if you're, even, if you're a hardcore free software guy that, and you, you insist that if you contribute to curl, it would limit uh, user users freedom somewhere because you, you want a free software license you would rather have it gpl but i would say that is very rare and i've never heard it from anyone who actually have contributed or even considered contributed anything uh, significant more you know there are always some complainers in <laughs> in the wings somewhere <laughs> but but i've never had any i think big discussion or serious objections no mm. All right. So given that, I mean, curl is, is a tool, but it's also a library that's used quite extensively in, in various devices and, and other programs and so on. Do you think it has benefited you to, to have a permissive license rather than a strong copyleft? Uh, yes, I, I'm, I'm pretty, con I'm actually strongly convinced that ha it has benefited the project uh, a lot since uh, a lot of the early adopters were commercial adopters and they've used it in a lot of places and a lot of them have contributed um, maybe not as much as patches but they have you know paid me to do feature things and they have submitted bug reports and so on so i think in general i think overall it has benefited us it has made it possible for us to get included in in uh, operating systems and products that it would never have been part of otherwise. So, but, so but of course, that's my guess. I don't know what have happened otherwise. Of course, no. hindsight is a beautiful thing. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, you can always indeed. Construct something. No, but it, if you if you look at let's say that the open source or free software is a good thing, then I mean, having a permissive license has sort of increased the amount of of publicly available or open source in the world, despite not being copyleft, so to speak. Would that be correct? Yeah, I think so. Because it allows all those uh, skeptics, th those who would be skeptic to free software licenses, they can still use these 
software products. And sure, then the scare would be that they would just take my code, run away with it, and uh, customize it intensely, and sort of make all sorts of fun things and stick to that and never contribute anything back. But in reality, I, that basically never happens. <clears throat> because as long as we keep on developing at a fair, fairly sort of high speed and, and decent pace, and we do things, um, I wouldn't say good, but or the best possible way, but at least in a way that sort of the most people think is the right direction to do, uh, to lead our project, nobody can really compete with us in, in developing curls. So even, even though they could take another route and go somewhere else with curl in their own projects, I don't think it has ever happened. Oh, it depends on how you define that, because I know of a lot of uh, bigger, like Tyson, for example, when you look at them, they fork basically, uh, they fork everything, and then they have this older version, and then they work, if they need to, to fix something, then they work on that fork, and then it's in their own infrastructure and so on, and it never gets back because of like, how yes, but but does it. but if you if you if you include that kind of work, then that includes every Linux distro. So every yeah. Linux distro works like that. <laughs> so there are what a hundred, two hundred, four hundred Linux distros, and they all have their own custom patched curl versions because they all run a diff, an old version and they backport stuff into their branches. So yeah. Th that is, and I will also say that there are also probably a bunch of companies out there that have patched curl for their uh, special operating systems or special working conditions, and a lot of those never bother to send back the contributions because they don't think it's worth it for them to help us be better to run on their weirdo systems. I see. And, and maybe in those cases, th those custom patches for the custom OSs don't make sense to keep in the main line either. Oh, exactly, or at least not in the way they did them. So if they would have to contribute them back, they would have, you know, spend more time and do more testing and, and polishing up things to be friendly for us. And maybe they, they don't think that is worthwhile for them. Mm. But I mean, Curl runs on, on quite a few platforms, doesn't it? So maybe, <laughs> even like Amigas and Ataris and stuff. Yeah. It does, but a bunch of portable. it is. It is extremely portable, but in some of those cases, I, I've just you know got reports that it runs on that system. I don't know what they did to make it run there, <laughs> and, they, and they never contributed back. Like for example, it's, speaking about Atari now, right? Uh, you know, I, I'm thinking more like PlayStation Four, for oh, example. Okay. I yeah. know that is part of the core OS, but I have no idea what they did to make it run. Maybe they didn't do anything. I have no idea. But that's just a sort of a. I just assume that they did some patches and and adjusted things to make it run proper for them. But they never contributed anything back. So the next person building a PS4 <laughs> will do it. Will have to do the job themselves. You mentioned that you, you you don't have you have multiple copyright owners in the new project. So has there been any problem relating to that or with a, a missing CLA copyright license? No, since we don't do anything with the... Um, we don't need to have any copyright license or anything. Since we don't change anything, it's fine with having multiple copyright owners. Mm -hmm. We just... So, um, no, it's never been a problem. Uh, yeah, um, we have had some minor instances where we did some mistakes that we had to rewrite code because some copyright owners actually provided stuff under maybe licenses that weren't as clear-cut and, and wasn't MIT the way I first originally thought it was. So it, we did, we've had some sort of you know minor mistakes and glitches, but they were, they were all just fixed along the way. So I, I, we have never had any big struggles with that, no. And I own, I own the copyrights for maybe 95, 90% of everything. On that, how do you find out if uh, a contribution is according to a specific license and so on? That no, someone didn't like copy code from their uh, work or whatever, I don't know. Uh, I don't. Um, I mean, that is impossible for me to do. But yeah. um, it's other than just reading and... and uh, it seems unlikely that it would happen because it would be really hard for someone to copy stuff like that. But, but okay, I, I, 
and I just have to take everyone's word on what they're contributing, and they have to say, yeah, this is my work, and I, I contribute that as a as a contributor okay. to the project. And um, of course, I don't know if that is actually always true, and 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 then none of my users know that I am always telling the truth either. So that's goes all the ways, right? Um, I'm, th I'm thinking that like tools like those Black Duck or Fosology and so on, which do scan code and try to match it to some known code and so on. But I guess Curl is n not using those tools. No, not not for any purpose uh, like that. I'm actually I don't I don't. Um, no, we don't. I, I, I wouldn't even know where to start to, to even check for that. Okay, okay. No. I guess we... Such yeah. ports from... Uh, I mean, we... <laughs> I've been in projects using curl having code scans. But I, don't, I suspect we didn't find anything, but have you gotten <laughs> reports it, it, from such... I mean, curl is used in, f in a fair amount of places, right? So it's being scanned all the time by all sorts of companies for all sorts of reasons. So I, I would imagine yeah. that if someone found code that they figured was stolen from somewhere else, they would, someone would have told me at some point. So That's I'm true. pretty sure. I know that is not a guarantee. <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone would have told me. So I, I think it's... But mm, it's, it's really hard. It's like that those bugs and uh, you know eyeball all bugs are shallow <laughs> but uh, are they really <laughs> i don't know if I um so yeah I, I don't know i think that's a fairly low risk thing hmm. with enough review enough uh, documentation enough it, it sort of it, it's it you can tell if the contributor actually knows the code and but i think that yeah, the yeah. biggest risk is probably that they would submit something maybe that they wrote for themselves for another company perhaps mm. or uh, that they wouldn't actually own the copyright for but we wouldn't find it with a scan but they could provide yeah. it and understand it to us maybe yeah, i don't that's know true. Yeah. interesting okay <laughs> it's a side story here i we had a discussion when i used to be a teacher at university i'm not anymore uh, th there was complaints among the other teachers and colleagues that students do too much uh, copying and plagiarism so I made a script that uploaded to a server, blah, blah, blah. So I checked and uh, sure, there was some kind of plagiarism among students. But a couple of teachers or professors actually had up to 97% of plagiarism <laughs> on a presentation. <laughs> and uh, I, will, yeah. I should probably report that. <laughs> there you go. By the way, uh, Richard, I don't think Fosology does uh, that kind of scanning. Okay. So, um, but, I, uh, I thought it sends you sent it the code and it scans it against something. Yeah, but the problem is what it scans against, right? Because if like curl has, is being used verbatim in a bazillion places as well so yeah. i i i expect that if you would try that kind of scan you would find it colliding with itself in a million places <laughs> and how would you sort of detect which is the original which is the copy and which is legitimate or not uh, it would be a really complicated scan and that concludes the first episode of the summer special see us for more fun with daniel stenberg next week take care